Hey guys, and welcome to this video. Uh, this video is going to be a little and short introduction into the meninges of the brain, uh, because I know a lot of you have a bit of trouble with the meninges, and so hopefully this video just provides you with a little insight regarding uh, the location and structure of some of the meninges. So I think the first thing to understand and to remember when considering the meninges is that we have both meninges in our brain and also in our spinal cord. Uh, for the purpose of this video though, we're going to be focusing on the meninges of the brain, but it's also important to note that the meninges of the spinal cord are identical um, in layers, really, as our brain as well. So, moving forth, uh, really quickly, uh, to get to the meninges of the brain, what we really want to do is we want to remove some of these um, bones of the skull, okay? So, removing the frontal, parietal, uh, temporal and sphenoid there, we can see that we're left with this. And a lot of people see this and we're like, oh, okay, well, that doesn't really look like what we assume the brain looks like, you know, based on all of our TV shows and things that we watch, we say, oh, this is not really the general perception that we have on the brain. Why is that? Well, because what we actually see in the brain is the cerebrum, okay? And we can't see that because there's this cover really outlying uh, the brain. And these covers, there's three of them, um, outline the brain, and they as a collective are called the meninges. And the purpose and the function of the meninges is really just protection of both the brain and the spinal cord respectively. And a good way to remember the layout of the meninges is PAD. That's how I like to remember it. So P-A-D, so Pia Mata, Arachnoid Mata, and Dura Mata. And also in that order, so pia mater here is closest to the, we can say, the brain, okay? And dura mater there is closest to the skull. So based on that principle, we can say that this covering here must be in fact the dura mater, okay? So the outermost and the toughest part of the meninges. So that there is our dura mater. So that's the covering and that's why we can't see uh, our brain, so we move that, okay, and then we come down to our second one here, and this is called the arachnoid mater. And the same principle applies, it's also for protection, and it's just the one lower down from the dura mater. And it gets its name from the Latin meaning spider, as you know, arachnoid, and we call it that because it has spider web like structures. You can't exactly see it on um, this model here, but in real life, if you were to look at a brain, if you were to ever do some practical component as a part of your uh, studies, then you might be able to get the chance to see how the arachnoid mater is very similar to spiderweb-like structures. And so when you see these spiderweb-like structures, you can automatically assume that to be the arachnoid mater. So moving on from that, we can get rid of the arachnoid mater. And then we're left with this, the cerebrum, okay? And this is really the brain. And this is what we assume and think of when we consider the brain, okay? And well, we say, okay, we've identified the dura mater and we've identified the arachnoid mater, but where the hell is the pia mater? And a lot of people get confused with this. And the pia mater really is a connection with the brain or the cerebrum, okay? And we can see it as these reflections here. It's really just this glossy overcoat of the cerebrum, okay? So it kind of forms this one connection with the cerebrum and the pia mater. And again, if you were to look at a brain in real life, you would see very clearly the pia mater and how it outlines the brain there. But for the purpose of this model here, we can't exactly see it, but just note that this reflection and this shining surface of the brain is representative of the pia mater. Okay, so moving on, uh, we also have a few other um, meningi-like structures. And the first one is an extension of our dura mater, okay, our dura mater. We know the dura mater is the toughest one, and so it would make sense when I say that the dura mater is also inside the brain, that it provides protection against the brain. So if we were to get rid of this structure there, so the left hemisphere, the cerebrum, okay, so we're still left there with our right cerebrum, but we have removed the left one. We can see very clearly up the middle of this blue structure, and we say, well, what does this do and what is it? First of all, 
this is an extension of Jiramata, like I was saying. So it still is a meningi. It's still Jiramata. It's the toughest, the biggest, and for good reason, it provides the most protection, and that's why it's in the brain like that. Okay, and what it does is it divides the right hemisphere from the left hemisphere, and you can see that very clearly if I turn it here, and you can see this running all the way up, okay, and it divides the right from the left. So what's it called? This is called my Folk's Cerebri. Now, the names of these get a little confusing, but there's a good tip to note that I've written here on the side. So when I say Folk's, I mean upwards or through, okay, up and through. And when I say cerebri, I'm referring to the cerebrum. So we know that's our cerebrum there, okay? And then when I say cerebelli, I'm referring to the cerebellum. And we know our cerebellum is located here, okay? And there's one more, which is tantorium. And tantorium really just means a cross. And it's kind of like a tent structure in that it provides coverage over something, okay? So, first of all, we have this structure. And we know it divides the left from the right cerebrum because it goes through the cerebrum or through the brain. So it must be cerebri because it's going through the cerebrum and we know it's going up. Yeah, that's very clear. So we must know that it's folks. So putting those two together, it is the folks cerebri. Okay, now moving down from that, we can see how there's this uh, very similar structure running across ways. So again, based on that principle, we know if one's running across we know it's going to be tantorium. And then we ask the question, well, is it going through the cerebellum or is it going through the cerebrum? Well, it's not really going through the cerebrum, but it's more so dividing the uh, last lobe here of the brain, the occipital lobe, from the uh, cerebellum. So we know it has an attachment to the cerebellum, and when that happens, we know it's called the cerebelli. So it's the tantorium across cerebelli, cerebellum. So the tantorium cerebelli. Now there's also one more structure of dura mater that crosses the brain. Um, and this is the, probably the most confusing one. So if we hide the occipital um, skull lobe there, we can see very clearly that there is another one that runs down here, okay? And this kind of runs through the cerebellum and divides the two hemispheres of the cerebellum. Okay, instead of the cerebrum, it's dividing the two hemispheres of the cerebellum. So based on that, we know one, it's going up just like this one. So it must be folks and it's going through the cerebellum. So what does that mean? It must be cerebelli. Putting those two words together again, we have the folks cerebelli. Okay, so quick overlap. We have the folks cerebri, the tantorium cerebelli, and we have, oops, sorry, the Folk's cerebelli, okay? And there are three structures of the dura mater inside the brain. And then <clears throat> we also have the dura mater, the outer surface, the arachnoid mater, the middle one. And then we have the pia mater, the glossy surface over the cerebrum. I hope that helped guys and I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know in the comments if there is something else that you want to go over and we can make a video on that too.